Since the dawn of time, Western politics have always been so polarizing, and somehow it's seeped into the gaming industry. Slowly but surely, it's turning into a den of ideologues fighting for their own form of social justice. Whatever your political beliefs are, we can all agree that extreme activism in gaming can destroy the freedom of expression and character design. It seems like Western developers will always listen to whatever the social narrative is, and if it's poorly done, it can come out as cringy to us. When we're talking Talking about RPGs, creators must always push for complex characters rather than predictable, and with our current environment, it can get pretty challenging. I want to talk about this more, but before that, consider subscribing to my channel for more content like this. It really is one click away and I would appreciate your support. With that said, let us get started. One of the reasons the western narratives are failing is because most gamers are smart enough to figure out the influence that journalists have on developers. There is this exaggeration of character portrayal and behavior that even normal gamers can recognize. I think one of the main problem is they lack subtle presentation during character growth. If they want to have that smooth transition that leads to it, they need struggles and hardships so gamers can believe in the persona. I feel like what they do now is push stereotypes and identities into their creation hoping gamers can connect with them. This is fine and all, but only if it's mild and not a distraction to the whole plot. When we first play a main character of a game, they shouldn't expose personal information so early on in the hopes that it's modern enough. These moments have to be carefully executed or trickled so that gamers can believe in their resolve. I think that every gamer in a sense has their own individual taste in characters and plot lines. The problem now is you have journalists judging gamers about the choices they make. There's this harsh criticism about how some games are too toxic or somehow misogynistic and the list goes on. These terms are used all over the place and we have to take them with a grain of salt. But there are extreme situations where these complaints are totally valid. Moving forward from here, I want to be extremely careful with what I'm about to say here. As a straight guy, when I'm playing a game, the main characters I choose have to be literal avatars of me, or something I can identify with, like playing Mario or Link or creating characters in Elden Ring. They need to be straight males. If the main character is female, I probably wouldn't play because that's not who I am. If you say, oh, I'm sexist or I I have some phobia, it has nothing to do with that. I've given it some deep thought and it's just my preference and some people on both sides forget about that. I would probably play The Last of Us Part 1 instead of 2 because I'm controlling Joel and I can relate to the gender. But here's the interesting part, I don't mind if the secondary characters are different like in Final Fantasy or any other RPG. There are times when I like switching to Tifa and Aerith because they have great attacks or magic, but Cloud will always be my first priority. On the other hand, I know a bunch of my buddies who would rather play female characters because of their certain build is stronger, or even personalities being more attractive. And obviously that's their prerogative, but is it really wrong to have those kinds of choices? You now have these attacks on gamers saying if you don't choose a female character, you must be a misogynist. And that's never the case for most people. It almost feels like they're dividing gamers with identity politics and polarizing the situation. One of the other issues I find is some developers portrayal of minorities in the overall spectrum. It feels like these are the types of writers that read a book about them instead of actually being around them to experience the hardships. It reminds me of that old idea where a white teacher goes to a black neighborhood trying to fix things. She tries to do what's right but doesn't understand what the struggle is like. So they write a vague character description hoping it will stick in the gaming community. Is it bad to say that a character's behavior does not need to be realistic? In Forspoken, they try to do that with phrase characters and it just came out really cringy. I just move shit with my freaking mind! <laughs> yeah, okay, that is something I do now. I do magic, talk to sentient cuffs, kill jacked up beasts. You know what? I'll probably fly next. No, you're just being ridiculous. Don't get me wrong, I've seen people react like this, but it's poorly directed or something. This is what's precisely going on in the gaming industry, and especially with remaking original content. Let me just say that the FF7 remake had impeccable character design, but imagine if Cloud's appearance permanently changed for the purpose of inclusivity. And if you're wondering, no, I don't have a problem with him dressing up as a woman in Wall Market. I found it more funny than anything because of the story, but most 
hardcore fans would be furious at Square Enix for doing this, while journalists would call us racist or sexist because we're like rejecting it or something. Again, this has nothing to do with any of those. It has to do with the character's original design. If I saw that Barrett's skin color changed to white, it would be really hard to consider him as that character anymore, even if it is a fictional story. Inclusivity is good, but only in the right circumstances, and that part will always seem to be debatable. Anyways guys, that's all I have for today. If you enjoyed my content, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Your support is really appreciated. You can also watch my other videos right here. See ya!